Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The program is about to begin. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Managing Director for Global Education, Worldwide Public Sector, Amazon Web Services, Andrew Coe. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. And we are excited and welcome you to our second annual Global Education, Imagine Education Conference. So quick round of applause for all of you, and thank you for being here. We're extremely thrilled and excited for you to be here. I recognize some of the familiar faces and a tremendous amount of new individuals uh, representing an amazing amount of organization and institutions from around the world. For many of you who were here last year, you remember we were at the conference center just a few blocks away from here. And we thought, okay, how many folks can we really draw in and attend our conference to share some of these best practices and really learn from one another? Last year, if you remember, we had about 400 individuals and we were really, really excited, representing over 14 different countries. Well, I'm excited to say we outgrew that conference center and had to move the venue over here. And we have over 1,000 registrations representing 43 different countries here in this audience here today. So thank you very much for flying so far for many of you. And I guarantee you it'll be worth your while and your time. So let's get started. Many of you recognize this is uh, just a sample set of an incredible amount of customers, partners, uh, and education organizations that represent the power of cloud technology and really have been an incredible journey to represent what they can do to innovate and really improve education. So many of you know, and you'll hear from many of these customers and organizations, like learning companies, where they're transforming their content into digital inter and interactive methods to really improve teaching and learning. So like companies like Pearson, McMillan, McGraw-Hill are all on board and on their journey to improve education through technology. We also have other organizations such as learning management systems that have also been there from many times in day one and also improving their way of ability to scale out globally, so Blackboard and Structure. And today, we have another part of our family when it comes to learning management systems as Desire to Learn has committed and a press release is going out today that they're moving 90% of all their applications on AWS. So let's give a round of applause for Desire to Learn. Go Canada, incredible. And we're along in that journey with you. You're also gonna hear a lot from higher education institutions that they're innovating to improve faculty, researchers, and even medical centers are a core part of innovation and what's happening there and a tremendous amount of organizations that are starting to adopt and accelerate these adoptions as they move forward. And even K through 12, or primary and secondary educations, um, that they're really improving the way that they're securing the most valuable type of information, and that is student data. So Prince William County Public Schools in Virginia, that they have over 30,000 students are hosting their entire student information system, and they're loving it, and they're making sure that all of that information is resilient, agile, and protected. So amazing types of great momentum that we are seeing across the world. 
Now, let's talk a little about the stats beyond the logos. Through our customers and partners, we are reaching, and our programs like AWS Educate, we are reaching over hundreds of millions of students, educators, researchers in over 200 countries and territories. So we have that as an exciting data point, but also a very important responsibility that we feel that we must continue to innovate, as well as ensure that the scalability is always there, and we are. We're talking about even new innovators or education technology companies, and there's a whole market of venture capital and private equity. And when we dug into the data of that, the top 19 of the 20 most highly funded US education technology companies are on AWS. And so we continuously work not just with the institutions themselves, but even the next generation and wave of technology organizations to continue that flywheel and ensure that overall education has a very powerful impact. And when it comes to higher education, 96% of the R1 research institutions are using AWS. As I repeat a little bit there, researchers, faculty, they're all starting to drive. And we have many of them represented within the next day and a half. Now, last year, I wanted to make sure that we also talk globally. It wasn't just about the US. Because as I stated before, that was one of our core pillars. Because education really transcends any border or territory. And so I want to talk a little bit and go around the world and talk to you a little stories of some new, we'll call it, education innovation that's happening around the world. So let's start with Melbourne, Australia. How many of you are from Melbourne over here? All right, well, you gotta be louder than that, Melbourne. I know you got a little jet lag. <laughs> I've never seen just Australia just raise their hand. Pretty shy there. <laughs> well, the University of Melbourne has done some pretty amazing things. And one of the, their vision is to have a zero carbon footprint campus. Now that is a very important goal for many reasons, but they're taking that vision and realizing it through cloud technologies by putting smart sensors around the campus. If I'm in a building, I'm not using the light, which ones are being inefficient and there's ways to control that. The one I like the most is mouse traps. They actually have, not a mouse problem, but they have mouse traps out there and there's an individual who has to go around, or a group of individuals have to check, is there something in there, do I need to clean it up? So they actually put sensors, and rather than doing this manual process around the campus, they will have an alert and notification that the mousetrap has actually caught something, and they would just go to that one. So it is true, you can build a better mousetrap with the cloud, and hopefully that innovation, as small as it sounds, saves money, saves time, and hopefully something better for the environment overall. Okay, moving over to China. How many of you are from China? Okay. There's, we got the jet laggers over here. We need to put some coffee to that part of the group over there. There's an incredible organization, company called Lulishua, who is trying to solve a simple problem with a very complicated, good machine learning that's making it very easy for consumers to use. And that is to teach native Chinese-speaking individuals how to pronounce and uh, learn English in a much more natural way. Now, you can do that today, hiring a tutor, going online, maybe opening up your laptop and going to certain applications, but they're having it using machine learning with a tremendous amount of database that backs it up to really accurately pronounce and have an interactive way of learning. So they're now, with that technology that they've created through the power of machine learning, they're reaching over 110 million users in over 175 countries worldwide. So exciting stuff. Let's move over to Noida, India, where ExtraMarks, one of the leading content providers for primary and supplemental education, they wanted to scale. They wanted to reach out to many more students in many more schools. And so leveraging the AWS platform, they're now reaching over 9,000 schools with millions of students being users, active users, on a daily basis around the world. So they're excited to see a tremendous amount of growth. So I forgot to call out who the folks on India here. Okay, you gotta clap. <laughs> uh, okay, let's now move over to Valencia, Spain. All right, okay, see? We're getting closer to the right time zone. The University SEA, or the Universidad Cardinal Herrera, are the first university to actually have Alexa for both Spanish and English. And it's not just a gimmicky thing, it's really to improve the level of students engage with their learning progressions. So for example, when are my quizzes coming up? What should I study for? The one that I also like is they can actually, through a voice command, find a tutor, 
book a room and then schedule that and just automatically without going to laptops and hassling with different applications. So we're extremely excited and I believe they're here to talk about how this next generation of voice is so important, especially to really engage this next generation of learners who may not always be learning just on a laptop or other types of other uh, ways of learning in the modular ways of improving that engagement. Okay, UK, London. All right. <laughs> I think they're still hung over from the pub last. <laughs> well, we have an incredible leader in the East, uh, University of East London, where they've not only taken the ability to adopt for their infrastructure cloud technologies, but then extend it out to their learners and their faculty, as well as the local community, to create jobs. So it's about degrees. They're adopting the cloud degree, and we'll talk a lot more about that later on and also driving that with a, a, a little community of ensuring that there's a loft where students can have the ability to put hands on to keyboards and really have much more of an experience with a career zone so that there's actually the ability to then cross connect that to employability. And when we talk about employability, we get very excited. And I know last year, we've seen a tremendous amount of announcements. Last year, we made a call to action. How many of you at a state level, a system level, or country level want to really raise the game and challenge this skills gap that we see globally. Well, I'm excited to say that in Brasilia, Brazil, Brazil, are you here? All right, one or several individuals. But I would assure you there's 2.5 million individual learners that now have access to the cloud uh, training from cloud, the Educate program, as well as AWS Educate through Senai, who's chartered to create industrial as well as vocational tech, uh, we'll call the training across the country. Over 740 universities are partaking in that. So they've really stepped it up and leveled up to the next generation of really creating skilled cloud workers. So really excited to see. Last year, and I saw some familiar faces from Santa Monica Community College, Columbus Community College, and Northern Virginia Community College, we had an exciting announcement that continues to really proliferate around the world. And that is our cloud associate degree in the cloud project that we call out in California. That was not just developed by us, it was developed by and alongside with faculty. And that has now institutionalized another pathway that is very, very applicable to jobs today. What we're excited about is, alongside with the leadership in Louisiana, the governor himself said we need to make this statewide. So they have announced just several, about a month ago, a little over a month ago, that that would be now indoctrinated across all their two-year uh, community colleges, but also to articulate to their four-year. So, and I will assure you that this won't be the last one, as there's so many more coming along the way. So for the folks in Louisiana and United States, thank you and congratulations. <clears throat> awesome. UCLA, go Bruins, are doing some pretty amazing stuff, switching gears a little bit. We always find technology separate from medicine and research. They're actually the first ones to create a new department. I believe it's called the computational medicine, where they've taken uh, the engineering department as well as parts of the medical department and created a separate department to really gain insights on some very challenging problems like cancer research as well as genomics. And through that, they're leveraging now the power of cloud to really get to that high performance level of computing as well as the massive amount of data in order to solve some of these problems. So for those that are not researchers, let me give you a perspective of the analogy that's on the blog that you can read for yourself. The, the, this is a, almost a paraphrased quote from the professor. Finding a needle in the haystack is nothing. We, in order to use that same analogy, we are looking at millions of haystacks. Finding those several small needles in there, determining if it's flawed or incorrect, and then mitigating that. So that is what they are facing, and they're now realize that it can't, technology can't be separate from that, and you'll see the acceleration of research and new dynamic things, and we hope for the best for UCLA as well as other organizations who are trying to solve really big problems through education, but also with the power of technology. So super congratulations to the folks in UCLA, and there's a tremendous amount of those type of activities happening around the world. What's more important is this cloud journey is not just about these organizations by themselves. We are here to help and serve you all along that journey. And as such, public sector has over 172 countries and customers represented by in 172 countries. 
And we have over 35 con countries employed by our teams. And these are just some representatives of the functional type of help that we can offer for you. So please, let us help you. As the proverbial phrase goes, it takes a village. And we are, want to be a part of that village and help you along that journey and ensure that we can help you accelerate to get to your missions and more importantly, achieve them. We also last year had feedback. We didn't have many partners there. And we realized that for every great success that I just showed and many, many more, that there's always a strong partner behind them or at the core of it. Partners are incredibly uh, important. And several years ago, we created something called the Education Competency Partner Program. We have partners everywhere, hundreds of them, thousands of them around the world. But we also had one that are very selective that we have vetted through our processes to ensure that the technical competencies are there, but also that they're focused in on your business, our market, and that is in the world of education. So they're here, and I want to really give a round of applause and thank them. They're out there in the booth, so quick round of applause. And I hope you have a chance to go meet and engage them because they have incredible stories to share with you, as well as, more importantly, any best practices and areas for you to also learn and hopefully even partner with them as well. Now, for those of you who were here last year, we had these three themes that we engaged. They're the same ones for this year. And the reason we decided to keep them the same is because this is an ongoing evolution. It's not a one-time annual thing. We're always seeing this workforce development as well as the evol evolution of machine learning and the ultimate transformation of how people are creatively finding their ways to achieve their goals. Not all of them are technology. Remember, this is a professional development level of conversation, so you'll see some pretty interesting things. What you will see are the progressions of some of these organizations. How have they come so far from last year? What are the new creative things that they're discovering along this journey? And from that, I think I'm extre we're extremely excited to see a lot of those develop. Now, with that said, I want to give a proper, hearty introduction to a very special individual. Um, and it's not because I've known her for a long time, but I would say, and it's even beyond all the accolades in the world, she has been a rock, a, an incredible pillar for us in education to be the strongest advocates, not just for us, but for you all out there. She actually comes from a home and a family of education and educators. And it's with that background, it's with that appreciation and that grit and tenacity that we are excited to have her as my boss, but our leader. So please give us a hearty round of applause for Ms. Teresa Carlson, who is our Vice President of Worldwide Public Sector. High five. Hey. Yeah. Hey. 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 hey, Andrew. Thank you. Wow, good morning. This is amazing. I think we've tripled what we had last year. This is great. It's pretty soon Andrew's going to have as big as our public sector summit. We should have that many educators in here. I think it would be really fantastic to have all of you here. Um, it's so exciting to have this conference, and we really do want your feedback. The summit is so important. And Andrew did kind of tell you, and I, I will share... Um, I do think education is our most important vertical. Of everything we do, it is the most important vertical. It's the most important set of customers that we have because we are transforming the way the world thinks and learns when it comes to not only technology, but how we get them to think and learn in the liberal arts framework, too, of how they apply that to business and mission. And it really is uh, amazing, I think, what we have going on with all of you in terms of transformation around educational learning when it comes to cloud computing. And Andrew told you a little bit, I will share, some of you have heard this story, but I am from a family of educators. I'm from a very small town uh, in Nancy, Kentucky. It's where I came from. Uh, my mother started out teaching in a one-room school classroom uh, for all grades, and my father was a junior high math teacher and a high school basketball coach, but they both spent their entire career in education. My mom, um, who is 90 years old now, until like three years ago, was still going into the schools and helping first-year teachers for Eastern Kentucky University. I've never in my life, they shaped my thinking so much around education uh, my mom was my fifth grade teacher. My dad was my junior high math teacher. 
My mom never one time complained about going to school. She loved every student. She never sat down. Uh, she became a principal, the first female principal in our county, and she was um, then became assistant superintendent for curriculum. And just loved, loved every day. Every student was special. And, you know, I'm from, again, a very country community, and people still come up to me today and talk about they left my mom's classroom learning how to read, even in fifth grade. Um, and then I had many aunts and uncles that went into education, and I actually got a teaching certificate. I started my career as a speech and language pathologist, believe it or not. So I kind of come from the science learning you know, and I tell everybody, in speech and language pathology, you do learn a lot of the liberal arts side because you have to learn to write and have, to, you know, you have this syntax and grammar and contextual cueing. And uh, even with this accent, yes, that is my background. So <laughs> uh, I've not done it for a very long time, but it was a great uh, way to start my career off. So education is just a super important vertical. And I will tell you, I'll go into this in more detail, but we really want to help you transform the way that your students are learning, the way that your systems are operating. And we can do it. For, for the first time in so many years, uh, what I get up every day and get so excited about is hearing our customers talk about their successes. And I will tell you, that is what is so amazing, that you're actually using technology in a way today that you are getting those successes that you actually need. I just recently, were any of you at the Public Sector Summit in Washington, D.C.? Did any of you get to attend that? A few? Okay, good. Great. Thank you. Well, Andy Jassy, who's our CEO and my boss, uh, I did a fireside chat with Andy. And I wanted just to, for you to see a little bit of not only my passion, but his passion for education. You know, it's interesting when, when you're in a rut, when you're 35th out of 50 developed countries yeah. in education, and you have a lot of people who aren't being educated so they can participate in the economy, you would think that the only way out of that rut, and this is true of commercial sectors, mm -hmm. is to innovate, yeah. is to try all kinds of things. We should be trying all kinds of experiments in education, as long as we're being responsible for the kids, because it's not about protecting what we have today. Right. It's about doing what's right for kids and for the people who are going to be the future of the country. Yes. Can I get a big aha yay for that? And that is so true. I think, um, you know, we are at a stage around the world, by the way, it, this is not just about the U United States of America, this is around the world. Wherever I go, literally wherever I go, any customer I talk to, the first thing that they want to talk about is, guess what? Skills. They basically say to me, look, we are excited about our journey moving to the cloud, but we do not have the talent we need to make this happen yet. So it is literally the first thing that is usually brought up. It's, I've been doing this now. I'm going into my 10th year, which is hard to believe. And every year, I take an inventory at the end of the year of the most important things I heard from my customers. I still keep a journal of all the things I heard. And it's been, for the last two years, it's been a trend. So I'll let you know what happens uh, in, in 2020 as I get going. But for 2019, and we still have a few months to go, but it's definitely been a trend both 2018 and 2019 as the top thing that customers really want to talk about. Not just talk about, but asking our help for. So hopefully throughout this summit, you're going to see our passion in really trying to not only help you in your enterprise, but help you create new models uh, to reskill, retrain, and help our, um, all of our workers kind of rethink what they're doing. So workforce, uh, completely important. And so, you know, we've always said that we have a responsibility as the largest cloud computing company in the world to take on these challenges and help you, you know, work together on ideas and come up with creative, out-of-the-box thinking on what we can be doing. So we are doing everything from engaging policymakers, which would you all agree it's important to engage policymakers, right? It's, so policymakers, parents, uh, educators, um, enterprises, uh, think tanks, 
uh, the university uh, presidents and all their leadership at every level uh, were focused both students and teachers, professors. And when I say students, I mean kind of students at every level. So everything from our Educate program to our Academy program, uh, both uh, in person and online training is uh, what we're looking at. And then we're seeing really kind of fun uh, fun programming come out from tools like uh, Alexa. Uh, the other big trend that I've shared is all the universities that I've been talking to over the last six months this year, seven months almost now, they bring up Alexa and what they're doing on their campuses with Alexa with not a lot of help out of the gate from us. They're just taking this on. So, and I'm sure you all will be sharing all those stories and hearing more about Alexa through this conference. Um, also, our cloud innovation centers, which are so exciting. You're going to be hearing a lot more about those. But let's take a closer look at a few of these programs. Um, so one area that I have been super passionate about since I started here uh, is underrepresented females and underrepresented uh, communities for tech. And, you know, you heard kind of where I started my career and in education and healthcare, you have a much more of a balance. In fact, there's a lot more females and diversity in those areas. Uh, but in technology, that is not the case. We are, we are woefully underrepresented uh, with females uh, for sure, and people of color and just across all cultures and communities. So, um, so we launched something called We Power Tech two years ago. And We Power Tech is really focused on globally going out into these communities and letting individuals understand what kind of careers they can have in technology and why it's important for them to think about careers in technology. And that, one, it's a lot of fun, it's super cool, and you can get paid a lot. So explaining to them they can make a lot of money and do great things for the world in technology. And it doesn't just have to be in coding, which is one of the most important areas, but there's lots of careers in technology. Um, and you know what I've learned, which I think it's always important. I like to learn something all the time. And one of our leaders who runs the EU came up to me, Cameron Brooks, and he said, Teresa, I need your help in also thinking about diversity across Europe in other areas. So, you know, in the U.S., you have diversity in different ways across all regions of the world. So we want to focus regionally on what does diversity mean in different parts of the region around the world. And I tell this story, when you go to the Middle East, in Bahrain, and I was in Saudi, there's more females that are in computer science than there are males and that are getting trained and certified. Sixty percent of the workers in government doing computer science in Bahrain are females. Unbelievable. I'm like, how'd you do that? So, like, you learn from other places and, you know, trying to figure out, like, why is that working there and it doesn't work so well here. But, again, we're also engaging uh, education leaders like Amanda Broderick. Amanda, are you in the house somewhere, hopefully? Hey, Amanda's here. Yay. Who's an amazing, who's super amazing. I'm so impressed with her. She's from the University of East London. And hopefully you'll hear from her today on a panel. We, we did a panel when I was in London at our London Summit where we talked about engaging leaders and how do you do that and what can the leaders do to actually make a difference when it comes to uh, underrepresented individuals in the technology space. And another area that is so, I think, near and dear to all of our hearts is working with our military uh, veterans and their spouses. And Amazon has always had a passion for the military, always. And we find, we find that they're actually fantastic workers. They fit very well in our mountain mall across Amazon. And for AWS, we love them. And we've been working on a program with our veterans. And we support a lot of our partners who also have, have apprentice and uh, retraining programs. But now we're, we're creating more programs even with them. Um, for our apprentice, I think we have 175 apprentices right now that are enrolled, and our first graduating class has all moved into full-time jobs at Amazon. So we're so excited about this. And we're taking another step forward even today with Nova, where we're announcing a new certification in data intelligence for the active duty Marine Corps members. And this curriculum has been jointly developed with the Marine Corps, Northern Virginia Community College, and AWS. 
and Marines are going to be able to learn the fundamentals of cloud computing, data analytics, and machine learning, which is great. Those Marines are, need to have those skills, right? We need them to have the best of the skills. So, and as an added bonus, the Marines, will, they're going to be well positioned to also do the cloud computing associates degree at NOVA. So we're really excited to sit, just thinking about, again, new ways, new programs, and touching all groups in order to help them learn. And our, in our government work, uh, you know, around the world, from our government um, customers, I hear the very same thing. Look, I need skills. If I'm going to move fast, I really need to move these skills. Now, the other thing we have are these cloud innovation centers. The cloud innovation centers are run by Ben Butler. I don't know if Ben is here today. But um, this is a model that is practical, hands-on experience. We launched our first kick at Cal Poly. And Cal Poly is doing amazing. The stuff they're doing is amazing. Everything from trying to understand uh, strawberries, which are four plus billion dollars a year uh, to the economy in California, that a lot of them rot before they can actually pick them. So we're using IoT and machine learning to determine how do you get those strawberries out of the field quickly and on time so uh, California can take advantage of that e economic development opportunity and not lose it. Uh, but these centers, the idea is to work between community, the educational institution, government, and AWS to try to solve real world problems. And most of these kicks that we have today are focused on specific areas that make sense for them. And what we do with AWS, they provide, the universities provide the real estate, the location, the space. We come in and help them with all of their programming, all the innovation cycles. We provide cloud computing credits and training and work together so we can then talk about and market out to what is happening but not only market, solve real problems in that, uh, that these students are learning from that can actually be utilized within whatever it is, the government, the community, the local campus. Um, and they use the working backwards process from Amazon. So we teach them all about how we innovate and we allow them to pick up and use those. So we have eight kicks that have been launched around the world. I talked to you about Cal Poly who's doing not only agriculture, which I love, but they're also doing um, both the strawberries and optimizing agriculture. They're also working on space, new space activities uh, for areas of space exploration. And then we have a smart cities kick with Arizona State University, Go Sparky. Um, I know some of you guys are in the audience today. I was out there when we launched that one. It was a lot of fun. And this one now is really, and I saw it firsthand, Arizona State University is using all kinds of cloud technologies to solve problems in their campus, in their city, which has, I think, over 100,000 people just in that community alone and growing. And they're working in joint partnership with both the state of Arizona and the government to try to, again, solve these problems. Uh, and these right here, you see a bench. We just launched some in Europe, in Germany recently. Um, we have across the world, and they're growing, which these are, again, super exciting. And today, I'm thrilled to announce our newest Cloud Innovation Center with the University of British Columbia in Canada. And it's the first of its kind. Yay, Canada! Go, Canada! Woo! It's the first of its kind, and I really love this one because I talked to the team last night. I met with them last year, and we talked about doing this, and now they're off and running. And they're going to focus on health and well-being challenges, uh, health and wellness, including mental health, for example, suicide and homelessness that we know affects a big part of our community. Just look outside here in Seattle. You see what's happening. We have a lot of uh, homeless population around the world. And they're going to be developing uh, solutions around this coming into the early next year. And when you show up here, I bet you're going to hear about their challenges. And we talked last night uh, among Arizona State University and uh, UBC and I were just kind of chatting at our reception and talking about we want to share these best practices and learn from each other so that we know what's working and not what's not working. 
Um, now let's talk about our AWS Educate degrees. This is something I think you guys heard us announce. Last year in June, we announced our very first two-year Cloud Associates degree with Northern Virginia Technology uh, College, uh, Community College. And they're growing like weeds. I love it. This is the one time I like weeds because they're growing fast, they're spreading fast. And we started, I think, with 30 students. They now have 100. They said enrollment is doing well. I'm sure they're out there so excited about their work. Then we announced at the summit in June this year uh, an added four-year degree with George Mason University. So they'll pick up the two-year, and then they can go from Nova to George Mason and complete a four-year degree. And remember, they're going to get badged along the way and learn these skills so that they also can hopefully have employment. At the end of the day, our goal is one thing, jobs. And jobs, creating jobs and economic development for these individuals, but jobs where they're graduating immediately with the skills. They shouldn't have to be retrained. So what we're doing is we're using the working backwards. We're saying, what skills does Amazon need? What does AWS need if we're going to hire these individuals? And those are what we're using so that by the time these students are out, they'll have all the skills that they need. So we've, we've created this, and Ken Eisner and his team have just done, you know, every year I say to Ken, I want you to do this and this and this, and they deliver. So, and I've, I said to Ken in the very beginning of creating our AWS Educate program, jobs, 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 and the right jobs with the right skills. And that is really, at the end of the day, simple, but our goal, and um, I, like, I, like my big boss, Jeff Bezos, has always said, things can seem simple, but harder to be able to do over time. So jobs, jobs is the simple task, but getting those right skills can be much more challenging. But we're up for it with you as we go out and create more of these programs. But, so now, what's happened? Well, we have over 75 educational institutions now that have committed to creating cloud degrees. Is that not exciting? I think that's exciting. And in addition, this is going global. My global team always says, we want it, it's got to be outside the U.S. We're like, absolutely. So we, we launched our first international cloud degree a few weeks ago with uh, Career Colleges UK. So look for more, and I will, I will be shameless and say to you guys, we can also move faster in other countries if you want to help us also do some of the translation working with us. We're trying to translate as fast as we can into a lot of languages, but I think if you wanted to help, you know, see Ken, and let's figure out what we could do to move out into some of these other countries and translate this really quickly. So, like I've already kind of went through this, this is we went through our two-year to our four-year. We talked about Louisiana State University and the University of Louisiana, what they're doing both at the community college level and the university level. So, they've also committed, which I'm really excited about, the entire state going in. And I will tell you, um, I don't know how many of you know about the Washington, D.C. metro area, but we announced uh, our headquarters, too. For Amazon there, which is pretty exciting. Yay! I know, I'm so excited. That's where I live, so I'm very excited. Uh, but we, for the first time, I saw something happen in that area. I'm seeing it still happen that I think is really amazing. We have uh, numerous universities in Virginia, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. that are really amazing universities, and they are all have come together. These presidents are actually coming together and, say, and saying, how do we work um, as one big group to both attract, train, and get these individuals jobs? So they're working actively, all of them together, um, through the Washington Economic Trade Group to, to work with us on Curriculum for Cloud, because they know we're going to be hiring a lot of people, and our partners and our customers are going to be hiring a lot of people. So I think it's almost unprecedented that you have, and some of these presidents have never even met one another, and now they're coming together and working because they see the opportunity for technology jobs and enablement in, in this area that will really power the community in different ways. So I'm seeing like really fun and interesting things uh, like that happen around the world. 
And with that being said, I'd like to introduce you to David Raymond, who is the director of the uh, Virginia Cyber Security Range at Virginia Tech, who's also one of our most amazing partners in that area. And we've been working with them uh, on Virginia Cyber Range for quite some time. And what they're doing in this is they're working with on hand, hands-on exercises with students to try to really prepare them for the 21st century of cybersecurity jobs, which uses cloud. Who doesn't think we need new cyber roles, really, right out there? Everybody's worried about security. So with that, let me have uh, David come to the stage, and he can tell you about what's happening with the uh, Virginia Cyber Rage. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Teresa, for that kind introduction. And, and uh, thanks for spending a few minutes with me today while I talk about uh, how we're using uh, Amazon Web Services Cloud in a pretty unique way in the Virginia Cyber Range. So we're trying to solve a, a pretty specific problem with the Virginia Cyber Range, and that is, in the state of Virginia alone, there are over 30,000 open cybersecurity jobs, and that represents almost a third of the total cyber jobs in the state of Virginia. So we've got a, a serious workforce problem for cybersecurity professionals in Virginia. And so about three years ago, the governor of Virginia approved funding for the Virginia Cyber Range uh, to uh, expand, significantly expand cybersecurity hands-on educational opportunities for students in Virginia high schools and colleges. So when we started this effort, we weren't quite sure what significantly increased opportunities meant, right? So we figured that would be hundreds of students, potentially thousands of students, maybe even tens of thousands of students. And so we partnered with Amazon Web Services early on so that we could create infrastructure and courseware that would meet this need, which was uh, sort of undetermined at the time, in a scalable and cost-efficient way. And that's been very, very successful for us. So at the Virginia Cyber Range, we try to be one-stop shopping for cybersecurity education for educators and students in the state of Virginia. We have a courseware library that includes uh, course syllabi, lesson plans, presentation slides, uh, homework exercises, exams, et cetera, all the things that an educator needs to go into the classroom and start teaching cybersecurity classes. The, uh, the crown jewel of the Virginia Cyber Range is our exercise area. So this is Amazon Web Services cloud-hosted infrastructure where students can get a true hands-on experience doing cybersecurity labs and exercises in virtual environments that are isolated from the school network or from the internet so that they can do things that are going to look malicious in any other network location. And we do that by providing teachers in Virginia the ability to create a course, enroll students in their course, and then the teacher, through our uh, application, can provision exercise environments for those students so the students can get that true hands-on experience. It's really been transformative in terms of cybersecurity education in Virginia. Finally, we are building a community of like-minded cybersecurity educators through annual conferences, workshops, and newsletters, and an advisory board made up of students and faculty across the state of Virginia who help us to understand what their needs are so we can improve cybersecurity education for everyone. So our growth has been phenomenal. It's doubled every semester over the last two years, um, really more than doubled. And we now cover Virginia from, from one end to the other. We support over 200 schools in Virginia with the ability to do hands-on cybersecurity labs and exercises. Uh, we have well over 5,000 students using our, our um, infrastructure on a regular basis. Last semester alone, we provisioned 20,000 virtual machines for students in Virginia to do hands-on cybersecurity activities, and there's just no way we could have done that without using the cloud, and Amazon has been a great partner throughout this whole experience. So I've been fortunate to spend uh, the last couple of years traveling around the country and talking about the story of the Virginia Cyber Range with folks in other states, and um, there's a lot of interest in what we're doing, right? Uh, it's become obvious that the cybersecurity skills gap is not a Virginia problem. It's a national problem that needs a national solution. And so I'm here today to announce what we hope is that national solution, and that is the U.S. Cyber Range. <laughs> so with the U.S. Cyber Range, educators outside of Virginia will be able to provide the same sorts of resources that we provide in, in Virginia. That includes courseware, infrastructure, community, et cetera. And I encourage you to try this out. 
So write this down or take a picture of this slide. Sometime later on today, go to uscr.io and you will be able to get hands-on in the US CyberAge virtual infrastructure. You can try it out yourself, see how it works. It's, I believe it's really phenomenal and again, it's transformed cybersecurity education in the state of Virginia. There's more information at our website, uscyberrange.org, and thanks for your time and have a great conference. Thank you. I'm going today. I'm going to go try the US Cyber Range. David, that is so cool. Um, thank you for that, and thank you for all the work, because those are the skills that we absolutely need. So with that, I just want to say thank you all. Uh, once again, it's been really exciting for me to be here. This conference is about you learning from each other, uh, picking up new ideas, and giving us feedback on what more we can be doing to support your journey uh, to the cloud. Um, you're going to hear from Andrew uh, a lot more about the things that, that we have heard from you and programs that we've created. But I think these kind of summits are a real opportunity to look for new ideas and think big together. So again, we want to hear from you. And just thank you again for all you're doing out there every day, uh, educating all the students around the world. And I look forward to you launching your AWS Cloud degree. Thank you again. Have a great day. Thank you very much, uh, Teresa and David. Amazing stuff and very, very exciting. Now we're going to go on to the next theme. But before I do, I actually want to go back. We always talk about cloud as the new normal. I think you heard Teresa definitely, and also with David say, well, the new need, not a new need, but the big need is about jobs and workforce and skills. Now, as we switch over to now another interesting topic, a very developing, emerging, and established topic, uh, it's not anything new for Amazon. When it comes to machine learning, we've been actually at machine learning for over 20 years. So if you just imagine the recommendation engines on dot, the dot-com commerce site that we have, or the robotics in our fulfillment centers, or the drones that are getting ready to enable package delivery, these are all enabled by machine learning. What we have done is taking those experiences, those knowledges, those best practices, and start to apply them to many of our services. So you get to see not just theoretical machine learning, but actually applied machine learning that's very, very important for innovative things that we can do in education. So just a quick snapshot, not all of the uh, sessions that I could go over in detail, but I want to go just to call out a couple throughout this particular session that I think might be pretty interesting for you to learn. The first one, right after this break, you're going to get to hear about what machine learning is at Amazon, what are those offerings, more importantly, have a discussion and have the ability to engage at some stage to talk about how could it impact positive outcomes within education. Not theoretical, but much more applied and understand how translation or recognition or a variety of other types of tools and services could be very impactful for you. Secondly, as an incredible customer, California Community College, uh, and just a little tidbit of fact is that California Community College System is the largest community college in the United States of America. At any given point, they'll have over 2.1 million students enrolled throughout 115 uh, community colleges around the state of California. They're now not just uh, looking at data, but they're now trying to use technology like Amazon SageMaker to start to look at patterns of success for students or patterns of potential risk and really evolve into much more of a way of improving students' pathway and their college careers there. So very exciting stuff. A third one, ST Unitas, a Korean education technology company, it's also merged with Princeton Review, has actually created an application on the phone that you can actually take a picture of a written math problem, and it will go through machine learning, take that picture, identify what that math problem is, even if it's handwritten, and come back and give you ways to solve that problem. Now, the thing I don't like about that is I wish they had it 20 years ago when I was studying. <laughs> it made it a lot easier for me to learn math, but then my daughter quickly told me that, Dad, they didn't have smartphones 20 years ago. So uh, she was a little bit correct there. But exciting stuff, but new innovative ways of machine learning, like recognition, can be very helpful in learning and improving learning. And we're also going to have uh, another good panel session when it comes to education technology companies. 
such as Aleutian, EAB, Course Hero, and Imbib, uh, hosted by Ann Maryhew to talk about the evolution of how this new technologies are going to be evolving and how there's an emergence of another generation of new offerings that will be coming out that could be pretty exciting for you. And I will also make a special call out for Imbib. Aditi, I don't know if she's here or not, but one of the mo I've traveled around the world, and she is a, one of the most incredible, brilliant individuals, so I encourage you to also attend and listen, because there's some amazing things that will be coming out from not just that discussion, but even the, in the upcoming short period of amount of time. Now, last year, we had sort of an Oprah moment where we uh, unveiled a pilot program for Alexa EDU. You heard Teresa talk about how voice and skill sets are also starting to converge. You heard about some of the Alexa in education. We have sold over 100 million devices across the world when it comes to Alexa. We have over 70,000 skills, last time I checked, of different skills that are applied to the Alexa. And we're also seeing that momentum shift to improve learning by using voice. And so last year we had a pilot program uh, that we offered to higher education um, uh, institutions and 72 universities are piloting and they've had a great discussion. You're gonna hear a lot more throughout the day. But today, we also wanna now open that new program and pilot program to encourage education technology companies to apply. The application is open today. And the winners will be announced and showcased at South by Southwest. And so there's a table out there. If you are education technology companies that will apply, we'll make sure that we select the ones that are really showing the biggest impact for education. So we're excited and there's gonna be a huge amount of, uh, we'll call it excitement and energy at South by Southwest. So please look for that. And if you're an education technology company, the applications are open and we are open to make sure that we can really work alongside with you as well. So very exciting stuff. Now, three weeks ago, uh, we had, um, um, uh, there was a conference called ISTE and we had four partners announce some of these type of skills. And as an example, for if you're looking for ideas, ACT, for those that have had, you know, either applied to college or have relatives or nephews or nieces or daughters or sons apply to college, we all know what ACT is. And they've created a way for an advising way through voice to prepare for the examination. And so that was pretty exciting. Kahoot, my son uses Kahoot all the time. It is an incredible, interesting, fun way of learning through gaming, a very different way than I grew up learning. And now the interaction now is extended through voice. And so there's an exciting way of now interacting other ways besides through a phone or through a device. And so that is starting to gain a tremendous amount of popularity as well. If those that may not know Frontline, um, they're an organization that focuses more on the administrators of K through 12. They're in over 2,000 school districts in the US and they help really a lot of the administrative back office type of operations. Well, there's a use for voice there. As a, one of those examples is many times an administrator or superintendent or principal does not always know where there's absenteeisms educators get sick and sometimes have to call in. And apparently it takes a tremendous amount of time to not only identify that, but also make, ensure that a substitute educator is in there so that the classroom is actually continues to go. That apparently takes hours and a lot of time. But through voice, through all the actual technology that Frontline offers, you can just matter of seconds in order to get that information. Now, the last one is not always a happy one, because, but I think it's also one that we, you know, realize that it is a part of this world that we are. There are, all, unfortunately, emergency incidents that happen within schools. Uh, and so Crisis Go, an incredible partner of ours, through their emergency operations tools and systems, have now enabled voice activations to alert the proper authorities and administrators when an incident happens. And we know that every second, every minute can count. And so with that, they're also starting to broaden and expand already some of their alert and notifications and, and, and thank them for really driving and making sure that school is not just a great place for learning, but also a safe and secure place to learn as well. Now, just a quick snap it, snippet, those four organizations and partners announcing those are reaching 70 million students. So just imagine what you can do and what your partners and your customers and yourselves can do to continue to expand that and have a new era of learning. So we're excited about it. Please apply, and I ref definitely want to see every one of those incredible applications and winners go on to South by Southwest. 
And I also want to have and introduce our next guest, Andrew Gilfillan, who is with uh, Pearson Corporation, who is the Vice President of Courseware Product Manager, to talk about their new exciting entree into voice activation to make learning that much more uh, interesting and acceptable. Thank you. So here's Andrew. Thank you, Paul. So thank you, Andrew, for the warm welcome. Uh, I'm excited to be here today to launch the Revel skill for Amazon Alexa. Pearson's one of the world's leading education companies, and we're thrilled to partner with Amazon to bring more engaging and more convenient learning experiences to more learners. Revel's been at the forefront of Pearson's accelerated shift to digital course materials over the last few years. So what is Revel, and why does the Revel skill for Amazon Alexa matter? Revel is a fully digital, interactive learning environment that replaces the traditional textbook at a more affordable price. With Revel, students can read, practice, study in one continuous learning experience. Research in learning design, in learning sciences, indicates that when students are constructively engaged and when they receive immediate feedback, they learn more. And so that's exactly what Revel does. Through video, interactives, assessments, and other learning tools. For instructors, Revel allows them to assign lessons and track progress to make sure that students come to class prepared and ready to learn. Imagine if every student came to class ready to learn. But we know that students have competing priorities. They have classes, activities, jobs, and even families and other, other things. We also know that they're on the go more. And so with the Revel mobile app, students can learn and study anywhere, anytime, and on any device. And that's where Alexa comes in. The free skill, Revel skill for Amazon Alexa, allows students to learn and study on their own terms. Take Jennifer, for example. Jennifer is a mother of three and has a full-time job. She's also a student at Bowling Green University and was an early participant in our testing of the Revel skill. Jennifer told us that she used the skill to listen to her text while she was making meals for her kids. Alexa made it possible for her to fit in important coursework in an otherwise busy schedule. Alexa enables students like Jennifer to stay up to date with their assignments and when their assignments are due to listen to their readings, and even to pick up where they left off, even if they've switched devices. It's as easy as asking a question. Hey, Alexa, when's my next assignment due in Pearson Revel? At Pearson, we believe that where learning flourishes, so do people. This partnership with Amazon and the Revel skill for Amazon Alexa is another step forward in our effort to bring more engaging and meaningful learning experiences to learners everywhere. I want to say thank you to the Amazon team and to the teams at Pearson that worked tirelessly to bring the Alexa skill to life for Revel. It's now available for use in the Amazon marketplace. I also want to thank all of you for your commitment to education, because together we can make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. And with now Pearson and several other innovative things coming from Voice, we're going to start to see that become a very new normal as well. So excited to see large organizations, small organizations, to start innovation overall. Which brings us to our third track uh, that we're going to talk about transformation and innovation and really improving outcomes. And so a couple snippets of some of the agenda items. Again, not everything. There's so many more that we have. But I also want to cover a couple of these that they're really interesting as well as the first one is with College Board. Now, many of you know them as clearly the SATs and the AP examinations and many of those very valuable things where students are looking to improve their knowledge, but also in, enter into post-secondary. But people also don't know that they have a tremendous amount of data for educators. And at any given point, they've created a, an education portal that could have over 40,000 concurrent users to reach over 180,000 educators. 
to listen to their journey and how they got there to really improve that scalability, but also that accessibility for all those individuals that are in need to look at information uh, with some pretty interesting insight so that they can start becoming and improving education or pedagogies and all the variety of things uh, much better at their local um, uh, high schools and, and secondary, uh, uh, primary schools as well. Secondly, we have Emory University who has created research as a service, a platform that actually allows for the university to have a single unified way to tap into the AWS technologies and people don't always realize, maybe many of you do who are users of it, that it takes time to set up and make sure that the certain security parameters and all those are established, even billing type of things. And they can now enable faculty, researchers, and other individuals who are using that to get up and going within minutes. And so that's a pretty amazing thing. And the CIO from Emory University is excited to talk about how their journey, and not just the why, but how they got to that particular type of way of delivering that service to their stakeholders. And thirdly, what's interesting is NSF research, there's a lot of researchers who are also here and registered, and NSF is here to talk about harnessing the data revolution for researchers and really dramatic, dramatically improving and expediting the ways of delivering outcomes much faster with the use of cloud technologies. So exciting things where education is no longer just about a student, but really broadening much beyond that as well and leveraging the power of technology is some pretty interesting things that they'll be talked about. Finally, I want to do a show of hands because this is going to be interesting. How many of you have been to Athabasca? Oh, well, okay. Well, if you're not from Athabasca, okay. <laughs> I have as well. Now, it was interesting for me. I thought it was, this is my ignorance. Uh, I thought it was like a suburb of Toronto or out. I said, yeah, I'll go there and it'd be a quick Uber ride. And like, no. It's actually two and a half hours north of Edmonton, so beautiful drive, almost killed a couple moose on the way. And I drove in there late night and it said population was just slightly over 2,000 if I'm correct. I, I, I didn't have a ticket, ticket have ability to take a picture. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm here, 2,000 population, like what are we talking about? So the next morning, I met the team and discovered that Athabasca has 100% of their students and learners are online. Let me see if I get this down. 70% of them are first time college attendees to courses. Now, that sounds awesome, that's incredible. The largest online, I believe, in Canada. Now, how are they ready? We talked about skills and all the gaps that are out there. So how do they enable themselves in that community to become cloud experts? And so there's interesting ways that they have worked with us in that journey to really upskill. So that's also a very interesting thing and I was proud to say that Athabasca, very small town, but doing some very, very big, impactful things. So thank you for being here and coming all this way. And I apologize for the moose that I scared along there. <laughs> all right, so feedback. Last year, we got a lot of feedback. AWS, a lot of energy, a lot of good communication, connections with others. I am ready to go. My journey is there, blue skies, a little cloudy, pun intended and there's a clear pathway, I know where I need to go. And then we got the feedback, said, you know what, I go back to my organization, and many times I get lots of questions. And you know, you're laughing because you know inside that you go back and you're like, wow, I get questions of such times. My IT teams sometimes don't have always the technical, not they're so busy and all that. Budget requirements, how do I move to the cloud when I have existing license and, and legacy applications already running? And I've, purchase this hardware that's over there for, for three years, for the next three years I have to pay for. Security, these are sensitive information. Yeah, I Amazon and folks, you know, how do I handle that student data, GDPR, on and on and on. So as I stated, and I'll continue to state, it is not your journey and not your burden alone. We are here to help you. You are here to help each other. Uh, and we have also, as what Teresa mentioned, announced it's not new programs, but just to ensure that there are programs out there that will give you technical support, that will give you some uh, financial uh, assistance through some promotional credits, and even tools and technologies that could actually get you up and running on a quick lift and shift within even minutes. And so this cloud is not an easy thing. You just turn on like a little, you know, a CD, or CD, a little application you just turned on. <laughs> I'm dating myself. I know somebody texted me about the 20 year thing. But uh, that's a whole separate uh, topic conversation. <laughs> but the point there is we have partners, we have ourselves, and we want to be a part of that journey. Let us help you. 
um, and, and, and let us help one another would be probably the more important and applicable thing. Second feedback. We have a program that we kicked off about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, called Ed Start. This was to really nurture that next generation, innovative, uh, we call it entrepreneurs, that will have a good idea, but also don't necessarily always have the technical skill sets, understanding of some of the technologies, or even some of the financial means to really get their ideas into a reality. And so we launched this Ed Start program, and it has gone over 34, implemented over 34 countries. The most recent was in Brazil that we just announced. Super amount of excitement. And for the last past two years, we have over 300 new cohorts of new emerging technology companies that are emerging to really offer some really, really creative stuff. But it wasn't enough. We got a feedback. 34 is great, but you know, AWS, we sometimes can't even get to that city because we're so small. It's like maybe one or two people. Sometimes it's an idea they may have gotten from a coffee shop. So we are now proud to say we are launching this today. Applications open. Katie Heritage in the booth over there, where now we are extending this almost virtually. The applications are going to be online. Now we have a tremendous amount of offering of slight promotional, I mean, some promotional credits, some live and virtual trainings, and ability to engage with virtual teams alongside with us. And I also say it's just more than about enablement training and, and, and some promotional credits. It's actually a community of bigger education technology companies, some learning companies, private equity, venture capitalists that are very interested in working alongside with us and seeing what these new companies are coming for, other hopefully good things that could happen for their small startups as well. So help us join, help us get the word out, please extend this out. It's gonna be exciting and not only 300 we want, we want several thousands of them by next year. A quick shout out to the exhibitors out there. We talked a lot about AWS and the programs that we have, but we are also Amazon. There are many other programs that we have conducted outreach to educators, faculty, business operations, finance, uh, and some amazing new programs that we didn't even have enough time to talk about. They're all here, out there, exhibiting in the booth. And as I said before, we have a tremendous amount of our competency partners who are here. And they're gonna be doing some round, uh, some, some real round robin partner showcase. Really, really encourage many of you to go sit out there, meet them, say hello, and get that one idea that you can walk away and really impact your constituents as well. And with that, I'll say that we've always coined this about imagining new ideas, and I hope you have a, a chance to walk away. But I'll also give you an action item, as I did last year. Please. And now last year, what did I, if you probably don't remember, I asked you to all meet one new person to cross-connect. So I want you to continue to do that, but since uh, this is our second annual conference, I'm going to give you one more. Say, find that one new idea and make something of it. Go do it. Go implement it, go, go push, and go create that particular thing. And if you need any assistance, we're always here. And so with that said, we're going to have a quick break. Go to your next session tracks. And I thank you very much for coming out here all this way. Thank you.